When working with green screen footage, our success depends on several things. First and the most important one is the quality of the footage that you get. Do we have evenly lit green screen? Are our subjects far enough from the green screen so that they don't get too much green spill? Are the subjects lit properly? And I don't even mention the obvious things like the actor shouldn't wear anything green. Another thing, the compression of the file. We have to work on uncompressed files. This of course means a lot of storage, but it's simply necessary to be successful. So the quality of the footage. The next thing is our understanding of the matter. We have to know exactly what we are doing and we have to have the tools that make it possible. The footage that we will be working on comes from hollywoodcamerawork.us. Here we have the download section, green screen plates, and this is our clip. At the first glance, it seems that this footage is simply perfect. Look at the quality of the green screen. When we sample this color and take a look at the RGB values, you see that it almost doesn't have the red channel and blue channel. It's as green as green can be, but unfortunately it has its issues. And please don't get me wrong, I'm not criticizing. I'm not saying anything more that is described on the site itself. This footage has not the sampling of 444, but 422. This is how chrominance compression is described. 444 means that both the luminance and the chrominance have the full resolution. The footage that we have has the full resolution of the luminance, but the chrominance has half of the resolution. It's not noticeable for human eye, because we are more sensitive to luminance, but computer sees everything. We will be using chroma key, so having full chrominance information is necessary, and we don't have it here. The other thing is that this footage doesn't use the square pixels. It's supposed to be 720p, which means 1280 by 720, but in fact it's not. The resolution of this footage is 960 by 720, and when the pixel aspect ratio of 1.33 is used, we have the equivalent of 1280 by 720, but we lose the X resolution. So I decided not to make my final render 1280 by 720, but to use this resolution, 960, the actual X resolution by 540. So I squeeze this image vertically. So that's my resolution. I will use the distort scale node. I will plug it here and I will change the option to render size and this squeezed the image to this resolution. Normally, I would want to work on the full information that I have. So I would put all of my effects here between this node and this node. But not to make the tutorial more complicated than it has to be, I will work on the squeezed image. So we won't have to worry about the sizes of the images. Okay, enough talking, let's get down to business. There are two main things that we have to take care about. Creating the best possible alpha channel and then take care about the colors. Alpha channel will not take care about those things or about what's going on here. This material is semi-transparent and even if we create the perfect alpha channel for this part, this green color won't disappear. We will have to take care about it in the next stage. Creating the good alpha channel will also require several steps. We will probably have to take care about the transparency of this part separately, then the hard edges, and probably the hair will also need separate treatment. First, let's try to deal with this part. Let's use a chroma key and plug it here. Let's sample the color. I will choose the part that is closest to the hair. Let's select this one and we see that the default settings of the note are not good, so we will have to play with them. Let's first try to lower the cutoff. We will probably have to make it as low as two or two and a half. The most important thing in this stage is not to have any holes in this material. Let's take a look at the alpha channel. The most noticeable problems are here at the edges of her arm, but I think that we will have to deal with it separately but let's try to get rid of those little holes here. Let's set the cutoff to 2. Let's also try to lower the gain value. It seems that it's not a good idea because we begin to see more artifacts here. If we feel that nothing more can be done by adjusting those three sliders, we may try to manually change this color. 
let's use the HSV controllers and try to change the queue. As you can see, I am bringing back some of the background, but don't worry about it. It's rather easy to make it fully transparent using some other key. We are now focusing on those parts. Let's play with the saturation and maybe the value. As you can see, the value doesn't have that big influence. Remember that we are working on chrominance. Okay, let's leave it as is. It kind of works at the first frame. But remember, we are not dealing with a still image, but with a sequence. So we have to see another frames. The best solution would be to render this, but for the time being, let's check every 10th frame. So I will hit shift up arrow to go 10 frames forwards. I begin to see some issues here. 10 more frames and again and again. Let's see the image. Ah, no, this is not a problem because this will be taken care of by the garbage mat. I'm trying to set the higher acceptance and it seems that it's not the bad idea. Another 10 frames. Again, again. Let's maybe set the cutoff all the way down to zero. It seems that highest possible acceptance of 80 degrees and cutoff of zero gives the best transparency of those parts. So let's leave it as is. Now let's try to create the garbage mat, simply to get rid of the green screen where it doesn't interfere with our character. But I will not combine those mats together yet. Let's collapse this node. I will work on the original footage. Let's maybe try the distance key. Let's try to increase the tolerance. We cannot go too far. We don't want to have any holes here in those transparent areas. So let's go high enough to get rid of most of those parts, but not to lose any of those. And again, let's see how other frames behave. What I am checking right now is if I don't lose too much hair. As you can see, all the time I am trying to cut as much as I can, but at the same time I am taking care about the details, not to lose them. And it's even more important not to cut too much. And now I will try to create the chain of keys here to create the best possible garbage mat. And then I will combine it with the chrominance key and it should do the trick. Okay, let's maybe split this window. And here I would like to see the straight colors and here the alpha channel. This will tell me which areas should I sample, but I have to sample them from this image. Okay, now let's try to pass this result through the simple color key and try to get rid of those outer edges. So I will simply sample this color. As you can see, I am losing some of the hair and those areas here. So maybe I should lower the tolerance Let's maybe try to manually change this color. Let's add another one. And try this part. Again, I lost some of the hair and this part. So I also need to lower the tolerance. Okay, this part is restored. Value. Let's mute this, unmute this. Right now I am not looking at this part, but at the hair. I lost some of the hair, but not too much. Maybe this is acceptable. Let's try to mute 
this one, this middle one. Okay, I will mute both of those two. This is the state of the hair. Unmute them. Let's lower the tolerance of both of them. Let's maybe copy this value and paste it here. And let's maybe try to duplicate this one, plug it here and sample this area. So it's somewhere here. And simply by adding the notes one by one and sampling the colors, it's possible that I will manage to, okay, this is okay, that I will manage to achieve my goal. Let's see. Oh, that's something. I am losing the background, but the hair seems to be untouched. And this seems to be the result that I'm looking for. Let's check it against some other frames. Here I have some issue. Let's see which of those is responsible for that. I will simply mute them, mute one by one. No, that's not the one. That's not the one. Oh, this is the one. So let's see what can I do by lowering the tolerance. Okay, this seems to be a pretty good garbage mat. Now let's expand this note. This is the chroma key that I used to take care about the transparency here and here in the hair. Let's take a look at it. And this is our garbage mat. So now I will combine those two mats together and then try to make some final adjustments. So I will add converter math and I will multiply this mat, I am taking the mat, by this mat. And this way I got something like this. And I will use this one as the alpha channel for the original footage. So let's add converter set alpha and I'll take the original footage, plug it here and this combined mat I will plug here. This is how it looks composited over transparency grid. Let's try to keep organized here in the node editor. Let's add a mix node that will do absolutely nothing. I will simply set the factor to zero, collapse it and mute it. This will only reroute those noodles. I will plug it here move it here, let's duplicate it, plug it here, and this looks a little bit more organized. This alpha channel is close to perfect. It's hard to believe it when we are looking how it composites over the transparency grid. We didn't get rid of the green color and this was our goal, but it's not the problem of alpha, it's the problem of colors. What we are looking at here at the edges, in hair, or here in those transparent areas, is the green spill and we simply have to get rid of this. There is one node that does exactly this and it's called matte color spill. I will plug it with its default settings and bam, it's immediately much better. Without going much into details of this node, let me simply change the algorithm from simple to average, change the ratio. I will explain how this node works in the next episode. In this video I would like to focus only on alpha channel, but dispeeling the green channel makes it much easier to fine-tune the alpha channel. When we look closer here at the hair, it seems that it should be a little bit more transparent, but only in the semi-transparent areas. So we would like to play a little bit with the mid-tones of this mat. So let's go back a little bit here, this is the chroma key, responsible for the transparency here in this area and this area. Let's move it somewhere here and pass it through, I don't know, maybe RGB curves. And let's try to play with 
the gamma. At the moment I'm not 100% sure if I am doing something wrong or right, I will check it once I composite it over the final background. We will come back to those adjustments a little bit later. Let's treat this as the preparation of the setup. But there is one problem. We are focusing on the hair, but this node changes those areas as well. Let's mute this, unmute this, and what's going on here is something that we want, but it would be good if we could treat this transparency separately. So let me duplicate this RGB curves node. I will duplicate it using shift Control d This way it stays connected to this node. And I will use one of them for hair and the other one for this part. Okay, the setup is beginning to be more and more complicated. Let's start naming the nodes. I will name this one hair and this one fabric. Let's also organize the space a little bit better. All those nodes, this chain, is our garbage mat. So let's group those nodes, tap and let's rename it garbage. Let's select those, move them to the right. This is how our garbage mat looks like. Let me pass it through filter delayed erode. And let's set this one to something crazy like minus 15 maybe. Take a look at it. It shrinks this garbage mat. Let's hide it. And I will also blur it a little bit. Using fast Gaussian. And let's set the blur to something like, I don't know, 10 maybe. Take a look at it. And I will use this one as the factor for controlling the transparency of the fabric and the inverted version of this for controlling the hair. So let's collapse this one and pass it through the invert node. So this will be the factor for the fabric and this for the hair. Let's collapse this one, move it somewhere here and let's begin combining them. Let's maybe swap those nodes, S, Y, minus 1. That's the transparency of the hair, and that's the factor that I should use to include this hair transparency. So I will simply multiply this by this. Let's add converter math, take this and multiply it by this. And that's my result. Okay, let's duplicate this node and this time I will take this and multiply by this. And that's the result. And now I can add them together. So I will duplicate one of those nodes, change the operation to add and add those two. And I got this. This node originally multiplied the chroma key by the garbage mat. So I will replace the connection and this is how our final mat looks like. That's how we manually combine two alphas and in some cases this is the only way. But in this case we can simplify the setup a little bit. I can create the chain of adjustments. So here is my chroma key. I can pass it through one RGB curves responsible for the fabric and then the result will be passed through this one that is responsible for the hair and every RGB curves node has the factor input. So I can make use of it. So let's in this case delete those nodes. And here is my fabric adjustments. Here is the hair. Let's replace this connection. So I am creating the chain. Let's select those nodes. move them here and I will use this one as the factor for this RGB curves node and this one as the factor for this RGB curves node and this is how it looks like and it's exactly the same as it was 
but the setup looks a little bit less complicated. So let's now plug this one here and that's our final mat. Let's reset the curve for the fabric. I can control its transparency separately as you can see and by adjusting those curves I can control the hair. So that's my final setup. The alpha is taken care of, that's the final result. This setup allows us to fine-tune the alpha channel if we need to do so. In the next episode I will composite this image over the other image, fine-tune the colors, fine-tune the alpha, take care about the edges here, make the color correction of the background, foreground, I will explain how color spill works, introduce the light wrap and do my best to create the illusion that those two images belong together.